Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can use the higher order views in Surf UI. Now the name, the higher order views is not really any official name. So if you try to search it on Google, it's not really going to produce any results. Uh, I'm just naming it after the higher order functions in React. So let's go ahead and get started. The whole point of this is in the higher order views or wrapper views, you can send in a view as a child view to some other view. And based on a condition, you can display or not display the child view. So a very simple example and a kind of like a silly example is that what happens if we want to display some sort of an empty view, like you are expecting a data and the data is not there. So you just want to kind of like display no, like an empty view. Empty view means that it is saying that no data found. So how do we accomplish that? Well, the first way is that you will go ahead and create some sort of a state property, which is empty, and we will say that this is true. And inside the body, we can always go and we can say that if is empty, then, well, we can display something. So we can say, well, view is empty. Else we can display something else. Uh, let's say not empty, right? And obviously we'll have to use the returns over here because the type is kind of opaque. And uh, let's go ahead and build it. Make sure that you spell return right. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. And this is kind of like it's going to work perfectly fine. But it's not really a reusable solution. Maybe it would be a good idea for me to pass in different, like sometime I want to pass in a text but sometime when the view is empty, I want to display an image. So how can I accomplish that? And that is why that's the main reason of creating some sort of a view where you can actually pass in another view. So what we are trying to do is I'm going to go over here and I am going to create a SIF UI view and I will call it empty content view. I misspelled it again. Okay, let me go ahead and delete that file. And because renaming would be even more tough, right, in the in Xcode. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this empty content view. Okay, so empty content view, the whole idea behind empty content view is that this is a view where you can pass in some other view. Now the other view we're going to pass in, uh, we're going to use a generic argument of content where the content that you're passing, the actual view that you're passing is actually a view. So the only thing that you can actually pass in is a view and nothing else. The other thing that we need to make sure is that the property is empty. It's, uh, it's only going to be working if we are also passing in an empty view or is empty property. I'm going to go ahead and create a content, which is a function, which is return you, returning you a content, which you can see that content will be of type view. So in the end, it will return a view. So the whole point of now empty content view is that you need to pass in a property call is empty, either true or false, and you need to pass in the view, which is what view will be displayed when it is empty. You can see it's already complaining over here for empty content view. We do need to pass in some stuff. So if I go over here, empty content view, you can say that is empty. We can simply pass in some sort of a constant value, true. And for the content, which is the second argument, we have to pass in something that is a view. And the easiest thing that you can pass in is a text view. So I'm just going to pass in the text. Let's go ahead and remove that. And let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. There we go. Now, right now, you're simply going to see the text view, right? Hello world. But this is a cool thing that you can actually go ahead and say that I want to display the actual content. And the content that we are passing is the text view. So this goes and it just gets displayed as self.content. This means that this empty content view is a view where you can pass in another view. Now, you only want to display the content when 
the property is actually empty. Otherwise, you want to display maybe something else. Now, there are many different ways that you can accomplish that. Um, we have learned that you can also return empty view, or if you want to style it up a little bit differently, what we can do is we can actually create a little bit of a neomorphic design kind of thing. And you can see there, here we go, that we are using vStack and we're gonna say self.content, whatever view you're putting. And if it is empty, then set the width to 300. If it is empty, then set the height to 200 or else it's going to be zero, zero. So this means it's not going to be displayed. And we can actually check it out. I mean, over here in the actual preview provider, we can actually go ahead and pass in false. Let's go ahead and save it. And you can see that the view is now gone. But the real beauty of this empty content view comes into play that how you can actually use it from the content view. So if I go to my content view, instead of all of this stuff, I can say empty content view. And you can see that I need to pass in is empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass in is empty, which is my state property. And the second argument, which is a content, is the actual view. So I can go ahead and pass in, uh, let's say, sorry, no data is available, right? So I think it, it becomes very, very flexible because not only that you can pass in a text over here, if you like, in a completely separate page, a completely separate screen, you can pass in some sort of an image also. And that is going to be working fine also. I mean, I can go ahead and let's go ahead and change this property to false. And let's go ahead and run this. Now, if this property is false, obviously is empty is not true and now it is not displayed. If I go ahead and make it true again, then you'll see that the text content is getting displayed. But this part, the text content is kind of like completely up to you. If you want to display something else, you have the opportunity to do that. So let's say I'm, in a completely separate screen, I'm not interested in displaying the text, I'm interested in displaying image. Well, I can simply pass in the image view and I can use any system icon over here, whatever I want to use, art.fill, and I can use that. So you can see that creating these wrappers, creating these higher order views where you can pass in child views gives you advantage, give you way more flexibility that you can actually pass in a child view to them and in a completely separate screen, you might be displaying something completely separate. All right, this technique is actually used in React components and they are called higher order functions. And the whole, uh, the most of the places that I have seen higher order function to be used is for route protection and all that stuff, like the menus, uh, they will be validation and all kind of stuff, all right? So you can definitely use that to create a higher order view for authentication and anything that is passed over here will be displayed well if the person is actually authenticated correctly. So in this video, you learn about how you can create higher order views and how you can pass in child views so that they can be displayed if the condition is actually true. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this particular video. If you want to support my channel and learn more about SwiftUI, then go ahead and check out my Udemy course, which is SwiftUI and Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best-selling course on SwiftUI. It is a 16 plus hour course, and I keep on adding new content. I have close to 3,700 plus students enrolled, and you can see the content that is covered in this course. We're gonna start with creating combining views, building lists, navigation, very important section on understanding state and binding, even MVVM design pattern. And then we will learn about how you can communicate with a web API that is returning JSON. It even goes into using core data. It goes into SwiftUI animation. And then it even covers how to create really practical applications like Apple Stocks application and a near me app, which is going to be integrating with Google, uh, Apple Maps. To make sure that you get the course, the best way to get this course is by using the link in the YouTube description. So please check out the links 
in the YouTube description and you can get the complete course. Thank you so much for following my videos and for your continuous support. Thank you so much.